that I won't take too long. Come on in. We're glad to have you all. The year was 1836. And as I said, I had a, a brand new husband of several years and a new baby. And those were revolutionary times. You know, Santa Anna had the gall to invade Texas. And through the fall of 1835, and then on into that spring, that horrible spring of 1836, we had Mexican forces everywhere. They went to San Antonio and they slaughtered our men at the Alamo. Every one of them, even David Crockett. And then they heard, we heard the horrible story down the Goliath. And if you think the Alamo was bad, Goliath was awful. They took our 350 Texans out and shot them all. Left them there. Well, being a young bride, I was very nervous because our farm was a long way from anywhere. And my husband wanted to leave, and I knew he did. And he finally decided that he would go join Mr. Sainz. We call him Mr. Say, and he might know it as General Houston, one of the greatest men that ever walked this earth. Well, he joined up with Mr. Sam down to Gross's plantation. And from there, Mr. Sam said, the Texian army has got one good fight. And by George, they did. They traveled by foot, mostly, around to a place out of what is now we call Houston, one of our big cities during the Republic. But it was a place called San Jacinto. And you know what? We call them that. Those Mexicans were having a siesta. And our Texian soldiers had a lot of hate in them because they knew all those wonderful men who had been slaughtered. And so on an afternoon in April, we had about 900 men who marched across very quietly and surprised all of those Mexicans, most especially Mr. Santa Anna. He was in the tent, and I think he was playing checkers with Henry Morgan. Whatever. Anyway, there was a fight, and you know it lasted a good 20 minutes. Did you know that? 20 minutes, and we were the Texas Republic. It was all over that quick. So at the end of that few minutes, Sam Houston, under a tree, wounded somebody, actually wants a shot at the uh, he, he needed to do something, and here comes a group of Mexicans in, and, and they were bringing a prisoner. And nobody knew who the prisoner was, and we didn't either until all the men started saying, El Presidente, El Presidente. So uh, sure enough, we had captured Sam Anna, and thank goodness Mr. Sam did not have any kid. But he did hold on to him, and he became a wonderful negotiator too. But that's another day. You may wonder why I know so much about this, because you know back then women weren't supposed to know things like this. But I had a Paul who had made sure that I was well read, and that's why I know these stories. You know, girls, I think if we'd been able to take care of this, we could have taken care of it much faster. But in those days, women were made to stay home and turn butter and have babies and have more babies, turn more butter. So as the days went by, the new republic had to be created. Do you realize we're the only state in the whole union that ever was an independent country? Now we were independent hanging on by thread because I'm telling you those are hard times. 40,000 people in the whole republic. And the Republic was right along the river bottom, down on the Brazos, the Colorado, some of those other rivers down that way. Plantations, little farms, some of them having their people to help them work, some of them just all and all and kids work. It was a very isolated life. Let me tell you what's not, what was not around during the Republic days. Money, zilch, no money during the Republic. Come on in. We're glad to have you. There was not a nickel to be found in the Republic. So everything, how did they do it? They bought it. Have you ever bought
barn where well, that's my family where they had to purchase. There was no industry during the Republic of Texas. The Republic of Texas was meant only to be brief until we could become United States citizens. And you know, here we go with the men again, girls. Up in Congress, it took them nearly 10 years to get us annexed to the United States. But during that time in Texas, life was severe. Indians were a major problem. There were problems right down in the middle of San Antonio. They gathered a bunch of Indian chiefs supposedly to call peace and they ended up shooting them. And, oh, it was a nasty thing. And there were massacres and there was just horrible things out on the frontier. Everybody had to deal with Indians. But as time went by, there was good things happening. I forgot to tell you one of the best stories, ladies, that had to do with the, re the revolution. I have to tell you this a little bit because it was so important to me, baby Sarah. One day after we had heard about the Alamo and we had heard about Goliad and, and harm, see Sam Hanna said he would take no quarter. Now no quarter means nobody's going to live past me. I'm going to kill him. Well, it was a wet, soggy, cold spring. And we got news that Santa Anna was coming to get the women folk. Now, put yourself in their place. Panic. Nobody but women on the farm taking care of it. The news comes, the next ten soldiers just right down the road. What would you do? What would you do, man? Can you put yourself in their you and your people and your children. Well, I did what most of the other women did. I got the wagon out the front yard. I loaded it up with the stupidest bunch of stuff later. Girl, I said, didn't take food, didn't take anything I really needed. And we headed east. I'm telling you, I only took two nappies for my baby, Sarah. And it being a cold, wet spring, I'm telling you, she probably never had a dry nappy on her bottom the whole time I was gone. It never dried out. She eat on those nappies. We just use them over and over again. But it just never quite dried out. And so as time goes by, oh, people died on that run. They called it later the runaway spray. It was women and children, our people, and a few other folks. And we'd come to a river, and it'd be flooded, and we had to ford it or we had to die trying. And a lot of them died trying. They died of sicknesses. It was a terrible story. I just wanted to mention that runaway spray because we were plumb to San Jacinto almost when we heard about the battle. And everybody got turned around and go back home. And you know what we found at home? I forgot to let the chickens out of the coop. I left food on the table and the cows needed milking out in the pasture. And that was one of the most Probably the most sad, critical periods because we realized, you know, we were subject to so much. And it was just us women trying to survive. But later, our husbands came home and we started all over again and proceeded to experience the Great Republic of Texas. Now, girls, one other thing. Our men folk, they were good, hard working men. They were not too worried about educating our young ones. They liked to bear bait. They figured out all kinds of sports with wild animals. And they loved racing horses and them. But they forgot about education. So we didn't have any education system in Texas during those, the Republic years. We had three presidents during the Republic of Texas. Mr. Sam was first. The second man was a man named Maribel Lamar. Now, Mirabeau Lamar and Mr. Houston did not agree on what to do with the Indians. General Sam wanted to live beside them and get them their own land. And they were a calm group, mostly Cherokee at that time. The Apache were way out in that frontier area. Well, Lamar comes along and he wants to kill them all. And so there was a lot of death to the Native Americans during that time. To give you one more idea of how bad it was, 
the story was told during that time that, that the President of the Republic, Mr. Sam, said to write letters. You know, we needed to be recognized by some of the other countries if we're going to be an official country. He couldn't afford stationery. To buy stationery, there was simply no money in the treasury. He wanted money badly so he could pay the soldiers. But not having any money, he furloughed them. You go home and we'll call you back when we need you. You really just couldn't afford to pay them. And then those 600 that stayed, I don't guess they ever got paid. You left 600 in the army of the Republic. So you kind of get an idea. And then along comes Mr. Simmons and he organizes this fine display that takes up where the Republic leaves off. You know, there's one of my favorite quotes in all of our history that had to do with this story. Annexation was a problem because of slavery. The Congress was afraid if they let Texas in, there'd be another slave state. The Yankees always a mess to be around. <laughs> they would say, if we let another slave state in, then the free states are going to be out balance. So he took them, like I said, well, well about 10 years to get all this figured out. And then finally, in October of 1845, there was a vote in the great state of Texas. Now, can anybody in this audience tell me who could vote in 1845? Not very many. The vote was 4,000 to 200. Now, Mr. Wilson, who did not get to vote in 1845? The winner. The winner. No answers. <laughs> Right. And who else didn't get to vote? Anyone who wasn't white, maybe. So in the great count, there was 4,000 votes for annexation. Remember, that's what the Republic's all about. 200 against. They had to send the papers now up to Washington, and Washington had to okay it with their vote, which happened in December. And by February, 1846, Final curtain falls on the Republic of Texas in a very simple ceremony. My husband was there. He wanted it all. The third president of the Republic was Dr. Anson Jones. And he stood out there and the band played and the soldiers saluted. And that last time they lowered that grand flag of the Republic of the Lone Star. And as it was brought down, and the story ends on the Republic. Mr. Jones said, Dr. Jones said, the final act in this great drama has occurred. The Republic of Texas is no more. Our story begins then with the next part of our history, and that is the great annexation of Texas. We become number 28 of the states to enter the Union. I hope now enjoy the display, enjoy the uh, whatever we've got to offer for you, some sweets and treats and so forth, and we're so glad you're here today.